All right, today we're gonna to be talking about Fortress Hardpoint and specifically the breakoffs for both the good side and the bad side. So let's get right into it. Okay, so to start with the good side, what you really wanna do is just make everything controlled as possible. Make sure you're watching all the lanes and making sure that no one on the enemy team can get through to your base and start making things chaotic by actually contesting the spawn or getting into P2 and wrapping through the back and making you actually have to clear them. So off the break, you'd see a lot of times teams playing you know, a regular spread, whether it's one person open, one person closed, one person top dubs. Uh, one person towards the time, one person back here watching the cross the time, you know, you really standard positions to make sure that you have everything covered. So on this specific break here, what we're gonna have is Ant and Brandon watching open and close. So what they're trying to do here is watch you know, both top maps and uh, this P5 area. So they're kind of having a cross setup here, making sure that left side of the map is completely covered. And for the other two guys, Kyler is gonna throw his tax towards this P1 cross over here. And what he's gonna do is then go bottom art to make sure that he's contesting anyone uh, that might be pushing bottom art on the other team and trying to actually make it chaotic for us and get through into our base. So what he's trying to do is pick that up because we know that, you know, Pred would be someone who would really like to do that. So against Seattle, a lot of times we would be watching that bottom art push right away and for the last guy dan here he's gonna go on top of this little pole jump on top of it and now he can have a really good cross onto the p1 uh, he can get shots off and if there was someone playing p1 which is our standard break he can relay that there is contact to the person that is playing p1 and then they can shell off of that so as you see, he throws his tax and we're able to get both kills on the right side. So huge, two big initial kills for us. Because we got those kills on the right side of the map, we can now divert our attention a little bit more towards P1. So what's gonna happen here is Brandon is actually gonna wrap back, go back towards Dub and try and help out the gate lane over here. And Ant is gonna fill in his position, go towards close, and now he's gonna start watching uh, the left side here. So now we're gonna be starting to watch all of our lanes. You know, we're gonna push up into P1, start soaking time. And now we're gonna have all of our lanes covered. Like I said, in the trap, video especially on fortress as long as you have these three lanes covered you know maps the left side and gate you can put them in a nasty trap because they're going to be spawning back p3 here they're going to be trying to take routes but you're going to have so many angles on them while they're trying to come out and it's just super hard gunfights for them so especially on this good side if you're able to get those first two initial kills you can then readjust your setup like you're seeing here and now we have that setup on time that i was talking about with kyler soaking on time safe uh, while Dan is watching this cross over him and they're playing that together and then you're going to see uh, the other guys readjust too and now we're just going to put them in a deep deep trap so this is the most ideal setup obviously we get another two or three down and now they're just in a full-on blend because all we have to do is watch our lanes again as long as you're able to get those initial kills and make sure that you have your lanes covered make sure you're at least communicating with your teammates what you have and what you're watching so that they can readjust themselves you can really make sure that you can get a lot of time on this p1 and then end up chaining it towards the P2 because you will have the spawns for that. Okay, so this is another break that we had on the good side. And what we had here was Brandon and Ant still going towards this left side, but what they're gonna do is throw nades toward this P5 side. So what they're trying to do here is stunt their push, make sure that they can't cross further uh, than this P5 to try and get into P2 or even weaken them or even kill them. And what they're gonna do here is throw those nades and then instantly double chow this angle so that even if they got them weak, they can finish off the kill with any shots that they put down. So it was a really good teamwork play out of these two. You really had to coordinate pretty well. And on the other side of the map, what we're gonna have is the same kind of P1 setup where we're gonna have Kyler go towards P1, start soaking the time, and Dan jump on top of this pole here that like I was talking about before, watch the cross for him. And now you have two different two-man coordinated setups. Uh, so it's a really good way to actually use some teamwork uh, with the teammate that's right next to you. So you're gonna see Brandon and Ant throw their nades P5 here. They actually don't get the kill on number six as he hides in the hay here. And now Brandon's gonna push up the front open here. He's gonna watch top maps, bottom maps, anyone that might be channeling out there, as well as anyone that might be pushing through to try and get to front art and actually push into our base and get inside there uh, to try and make everything chaotic. And it's a really good teamwork play because Ant is still watching over him here in case anyone is either hitting this late or did get hit by the nade. So what he can do is get those shots off and make sure that he's covering over for Brandon to actually get these kills on anyone that he might see. So what you'll see here is Brandon does see Vickle trying to push towards either our bottom art or our close. He's going to now push up to take that gunfight, get him weak. And as you can see here, Ant was watching over his teammate, gets a really good gunfight on number six, saves Brandon's life. And now Brandon can get this kill on number five. And now we have a pretty controlled setup with the first three kills because on the other side, even though Dan was watching this cross, uh, Kyler was able to get the first kill and then finesse his life around this P1 box here and get another kill on number seven here. So we do get all these kills, four down, the most ideal situation. And what you really wanna do is make sure that you're at least blocking the back P2 spawns here. 
you do not want to get a four down and have them spawn behind you because you weren't blocking. So after you get a four down, just make sure that you have at least one person on your team blocking uh, so that they don't spawn in the back and get those free spawns. And now once the enemy's team starts spawning up, you can go back to getting into your setup, cover those lanes and make everything as controlled as possible. So this situation doesn't appear in this VOD, but I do want to talk about it because it's really important uh, for holding this P1. Let's say you're holding this P1, but you don't have anyone uh, on this left side of the map. Let's say number three is not there. Let's let's just pretend right now. So what you want to do from here is let's say you have the two on time. Number one should be blocking here from the steps and watching this cross through the doors uh, towards anyone that might be trying to push through either open or close. A lot of times in the middle of the hill, let's say 30 seconds, teams will try and take this route to get ahead for the P2. So the person that's blocking from this stairs area can watch for this deep route. And even if they don't get the kill, as long as they get the info that someone is taking this route, they can at least wrap back and work for them or with a teammate call out that they need help and they can just 2v1 this guy that might be trying to get ahead for the P2 spawns. So watching the deep route and also watching for anyone that might be taking a quick route uh, by jumping out of top maps and going through bottom art, as long as you can maintain that left side of the map control and the bottom art control, making sure that no one is going through those areas, you will always have a controlled P1 and can constantly keep spawning there for the P2 uh, to try and chain those two hills. Okay, let's talk about a break where we actually uh, do get kind of countered and they make it chaotic for us. So as you can see, Ant loses the gunfight on the left side of the map and they also have one guy P5 and three guys map. So they're not even playing through this gate or P1 side. And what they can do here is trying to make moves to get through to our art or P2. Uh, so it does make it super chaotic for us. Brandon is able to get not only one here top maps, but he's able to get a second one on the P5 guy. But number five, Hixie has already snuck through through our bottom art and is going to be able to flank Dashi. And now they're starting to spawn close and we're spawning P3 and it's making it super hectic because now number three has to wrap back. So this is a really good play out of Dan where he's just wrapping back, trying to stay alive, making sure that he's still blocking this back spawn and trying to see if he can win a gunfight on anyone that might be pushing through P2 and actually trying to continue test the spawns and actually kill Dan himself. So this is a really big one-on-one -on -one that you'll see with uh, number three, and I believe it's number, yeah, number six here, spawns up, closed, and he's gonna try and take a gunfight. So on the other side of the map, we're still losing some trades over here towards this P1 because obviously they can just look towards gate because they know that we're spawning there. And then you have the one-on-one -on -one here. Dan wins a huge gunfight, and it's really important for him to stay alive here because as long as he continues to block this spawn, they're never gonna have that good spawn. They're always gonna be spawning either P5 or P2, but they're never going to have that main spawn. But you always want to be making sure that you can hold that main spawn because it's the most controllable. And as you can see, since Toronto spawn closed here, they know that at least one guy is still in the back. So that's why they look for Dan. But they also know that they're not spawning P3 and that we are. So what they can do is look for Ant that's coming off spawn uh, through gate here, kill him. And then they know that last guy is on time. So What's gonna happen here is they're gonna look for Ant, they're gonna kill him, but Kyler makes a really nice play to actually finesse his life on the hill. He doesn't only get one, but he gets a second kill, and that's huge for us because two kills, especially with Dan getting his own kill, we know the last guy alive is going to be P1 after Kyler dies here, and we're spawning P5. P3 is gonna be open now, so you see number seven is gonna spawn there, and his other teammates are gonna spawn there as well, and now we can have a chance to actually make this controlled. As long as we can get this guy off of hill, that's what Brandon is gonna try and do. He throws his tacks, he actually gets the kill onto number five. Now it's white time. Dan goes back to the spot where he's watching the cross from this lane. He wins this big gunfight. And now we have everything controlled once again. We get a kill maps. We get another kill gate by Dan. Really two big kills right there. And now we can put them back in this trap setup because everyone's already dead for their team and everything is controlled on our end. A last setup I'll talk about is a really good setup that New York had on us uh, in a scrim. And this is really important to see uh, how they're actually working this. So first off, number two Kismet is going bottom P4 to bottom art and going through to P1 this way. And this is an important route because what he does is open these bottom dark doors so that number four can end up seeing the dark pinch later on. So really important to note that they have one guy open. This guy top maps is actually taking a really nice route where he's going from top stone uh, to the right side window, which is a really good off angle because a lot of times players would just take this initial route uh, that's just faster towards this left side window. So if you're taking the right side window, it's a little bit different for anyone that might be challenging gate. And it's just a harder gunfight for them because they're not expecting you to be at that left window. So as you can see from this, Ant actually does make it to bottom art. He jumps out of top maps. Uh, but since New York is already picking up this pinch because the door is open, 
Uh, number four can easily see Ant trying to make a pinch onto P1 and try and get any kills that way. As you'll see here, Ant is trying to make a play, but number four sniffs him out uh, and he's able to completely stun any sort of, you know, really annoying push by Ant. And now they're having a really controlled situation with all of us spawning P3. We don't have that opportunity to actually make a play through towards their base and start making it chaotic. And since they get that kill, they're counting names. They know that all of us are dead and they can go back into their initial setup where they're just playing completely for this trap and just covering the lanes, making everything controlled. So I'll show you what our main bad side break. So first, the main goal for specifically for the bad side was just to make everything a chaotic. As long as you can get, you know, one or two kills, get an opening, make sure that you're taking routes and make it annoying for them and actually have to find you because once you're in that base, you're contesting the spawn, you're making them spawn weird, you're making it super hard on them to actually keep everything controlled and that's just your number one goal. You just want to make it as chaotic as possible. That's why you'd always see people trying to jump out top maps, get inside the art or go through this P2 and make sure you're trying to take enemy space through P2 and really just make them have to watch so many things. So what our standard break was, and this was pretty successful for us, was we would have Ann and Brandon throw nades and tacks over toward this area of the map, try and stun anyone that might be instantly pushing P1 and getting them weakened or at least getting them uh, slowed down. So once Kyler, who was pushing up the first, he could then chow right away uh, for anyone that might be trying to cross into P1 this way. Uh, so he could try and get that kill. And what Dan is gonna do is he's gonna go top maps here. He's gonna be looking towards uh, open see if he can get any kills there and what ant is going to do after he throws his tax and nades is going to be going through uh, to bottom maps here and watching first for anyone that might be uh, close chowing out and if not he was going to instantly push through to the bottom art and try and make a play there you know ant was really good at making plays bottom art for us he can really finesse his life and with his movement if he's able to get inside that bottom art he can start finessing in their base and make it really uh, really hard for the enemy team and lastly brandon he's going to be the last one he's going to be sitting gate here chowing uh, top dubs. Uh, it was a really hard gunfight to win, but a lot of times Brandon was able to get this. So uh, he's really just holding it down, making sure that he can get that really important kill on a really disadvantageous gunfight. So I'll play it out for you here. You see the tacks and nades are thrown. Kyler goes first, starts challenging. He gets the kill on Envoy and actually challenges the guy close too. And then he's able to escape through bottom art. That's one of the main things that we wanted to do. We get those kills, escape. As long as you can get that initial opening, you can start making it super, super hard on the enemy team. As you see, he's already alive in their base and they're starting to spawn out P3. Because he's contesting that spawn and it's white time, uh, we are also getting a P2 spawn here. So it's a really, really good break off out of us. And we know it's only one guy left alive, most likely towards this P1 area. And then we're able to get a trade onto him. And now even though we start on bad side, it kind of looks like we started on good side here and we're starting to make our way into that controlled setup. Okay, we're gonna have the same initial break off here, but one thing significantly changes. So you'll see here, Kyler's in front. He checks the initial P1 push. He sees no one there. So since he's in front, he's gonna be the one to chow anyone that might be either bottom art or in this closed area. And what Ann is gonna do is he's gonna play off that. And since Kyler's gonna be the one to chow the right side here, Ann is gonna make a heads up play by actually looking towards the P1 cross too because Kyler gave it up. And from this, we're able to get not one, but two kills. Both of them are able to get their own kill from watching uh, what they needed to watch. And now we're able to start escaping and actually chowing onto these last two guys trying to find them. So we don't know where they're at. Unfortunately, Brandon does lose his gunfight to Cami. It was a really good win on Cami, and actually he's gonna get the two piece on Ant too, who is going bottom art. So unfortunately, we do not salvage right off the break, and we probably should have got those trades. It was just a really good two piece out of Cami. But what do you know? Dan is still staying alive here, and because he's staying alive in their base, he's making it super chaotic for them. They still haven't able to get on this time, so they're spawning in these back spawns because it's open for them. We're gonna get this nerd spawn here, and again, even if we didn't get those last two kills, we're still making it super mixy. You know, not as ideal as we wanted it to be but Dan is able to get a nice kill on the guy top dub and now we have good spawns all we have to do is just break back into this p1 and that's what we're gonna do we get the first kill on number two we're gonna chow onto this p1 uh, get another kill and now last guy left alive is bottom cannon here and it's basically like we started off on the good side okay so last cup I'll show you guys for the bad side this is a different break for us instead we're gonna have ant go towards his right side try and dive and get a kill on anyone that might be open and we're gonna have two guys that go bottom and top maps and try and help him out towards this right side so what we're trying to do here is really contest towards this right side maybe escape through close or open and actually get to the back that way last guy's gonna be brandon he's gonna be doing the same thing where he's chowing a uh, top dub from gate so as you can see as this plays out you know ant does die here but we're gonna be playing a lot of trades so another thing that was really big for this bad side was actually playing trades super well you know if you can play your trades you can create situations where there is white time where it is super mixy or 
where people are trying to come off spawn, but you're blocking certain spawns. And now it's just a really mixy situation. Again, what we're trying to do is make it super chaotic for that other team so they don't have a controlled P1 and can chain that into the P2. So the trades go down. We're watching over our teammates. As you see here, Tyler's going to try and make a move to get out. Brandon's going to try and make a move. Uh, we're still dying, but we're still having these positionings to get these trades. You see Ant get that kill. Uh, Dan's actually going to die from this guy watching the cross, but then Ant gets that trade for getting the guy on P1. So now they're spawning P5 because it was white time. It's just super, super chaotic. And now we're just staying alive, staying in this truck. You know, a really big thing for actually soaking time on this bad side is if you can get inside this truck, it's super hard for the enemy team to get you out of it. You know, they have to really wall bang you and get you weak and then chow you. So as long as you're just staying alive, buying time for your teammates to come off spawn and help you out while you're in the hill, while you're just soaking in this truck, it's a really good second option if you don't have the manpower or the ability to actually get through and escape towards uh, their base and start getting those P2 spawns. What you can do is just really soak this hill uh, and make it really hard for them to actually get points on this hill. And then while you're actually holding it, any kills that you can get, you're gonna get those opportunities to try and escape yourself. So the trades keep going down. You know, they're trying to break on into this P1 because Shotzi's playing it super hard. But once again, he dies, but Brandon is there for the trade. And since it's white time again, we get a bottom art spawn. And now it's just, it's again, making it super mixy. They're spawning back 18. They're spawning B3. We're spawning in the middle. It's really, really hard for them to actually get any controlled and now we get the kill on time and can actually soak this and have the ability to wrap back and kill this guy in p2 we know that he spawned p2 because as you can see here number seven and number eight do not spawn on the back so we know one guy is left alive at least and we kill him and now we're able to get a really controlled setup going into the p2 you know we're soaking time we have the p5 cross and we're already making our way towards this p2 so again just to recap on the good side make everything controlled make sure you're holding all the lanes make sure no one is getting through into your base and starting to create chaos and on the bad side side, make chaos happen. You're already in a disadvantage for starting on that side. So you might as well try and stir something up, make it chaotic, you know, jump out of top maps. I actually didn't show a clip of Ant doing it, but he was able to do that, you know, little bunny hop that you could do on the railing. If you're able to do that type of movement, you know, you can really make it hard on the enemy team to actually track you because you can get into bottom art super quickly. So really just pulling out all the stops there. And even in your rank play match, if you want to send four people towards that P2 side, just go for it. You know, the other team is just expecting you to play straight up. And if you don't play straight up, that's going to catch them off guard and you'll have the advantage over them especially if they don't have good teamwork or good comms so thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this full breakdown of the fortress breakoffs uh thank you guys for making it to the end of the video and i'll see you guys in the next one